Molly here. If you like what we're doing and you want us to keep doing more of it, please hit that subscribe button so that uh, we can get monetized and we can keep bringing you this kind of content and more. So anyway, this time, um, well, the old man and I, oh, we watched that Willow series. The first four episodes, I think Yes, the first four episodes of the Willow series after we watched the original Willow film. <laughs> and good old Molly here, she, um, let's just say when she was young, we didn't have a lot of options when it came to watching TV at home. And one of the videotapes I had was Willow, and I watched the living shit out of that. <laughs> So if there's one thing I was familiar with, it was Willow and, oh my God, this series is not good. It is so not good. I don't even know where to begin with how bad it is, but I guess I got to pick somewhere. So I guess I'll just start with episode one. Um, episode one was written by Jonathan Kasdan and he is also the creator of this uh, particular Willow series. He was also a co-writer on that solo film from Star Wars. He was one of the writers on this latest Indiana Jones film. They're not even sure how they're going to credit him on this film because it was taken away and given to different writers. <laughs> so, I mean, that tells me that must have been pretty bad. Watching that first episode of Willow, it was just, it was horrible. It bore very little resemblance to the original film. It felt like a lot of the original cast members from the original film were just dialing it in. Uh, the the woman who played Sorsha, she's doing okay. I mean, Sorsha wasn't exactly a very emotive character in the original film anyway, but there are bizarre things going on with this. Like she's trying to marry her daughter off to this other kingdom to solidify power or some shit like that. I'm like, really? The, the Sorsha who married Mad Mardigan is going to do this to her own daughter? I mean, really? I just, I don't buy that for a second. So, I mean, it's just, there are things like that that just are like, oh, okay. And then Warwick Davis is just dialing it in as Willow. It's just, it's sad to watch because, I mean, obviously I've seen him in other films too, like the Harry Potter series. And obviously I saw him many, many times over and over and over again in the original Willow film. I mean, maybe it's because the script is so terrible that he's not putting in the effort that I would have expected from him. But if I was stuck in a, in a TV show like that, that was basically pissing all over the original film that I was in, I think I probably would act about the same way that he does. It's just such a shame because again, here's something else that they just wanted the name and the skin, and then they just want to do whatever they want with the characters so that they can tell their own story. There are just way too many cast members, for starters. Like the original, the little group of people who were trying to get the baby to her final destination so she was protected from Bav Morda. It was Willow, Mad Mardigan, and the two brownies. I mean, it just started out with a larger contingency of people from Willow's village, but they quickly fell away once they encountered Mad Mardigan. You know, so you had, we'll say two and a half people, because those brownies really, they they were more like pets than they were full-fledged characters in the original film. So, I mean, it was a, a small group who was trying to protect the baby. They did pick up a sorceress along the way, but she had been transformed by Bav Morda into, I think it was like a honey glider or a honey bear or something like that. A small animal at any rate. And as the film went on, Willow tried over and over and over again to restore her to her original form, which was human. So she went through a number of different animals until she finally was transformed back toward the end of the film for the final battle with Bav Morda. It's just, it's ridiculous that... In this series, Sorsha's answer to protecting the baby, who is now a late teens, early 20s girl, Elora Dannon, she solved this little problem of protecting Elora by not telling her who she was and just telling her she was nothing special and putting her to work in the kitchens. So she hasn't been being trained in magic, so she is woefully ill-prepared to protect herself, let alone anybody else. And again, these are all mistakes that Sorsha made. 
after Mad Mardigan went missing, trying to find some armor that would protect. I mean, it was just, it was ridiculous. This story is ridiculous. And then you've got the princess, Sorsha's daughter, and her friend. It's just, oh God, the daughter is a nasty piece of work. She is such a selfish, rude little, and I just have to say this, she's a bitch. She just seems like such a privileged little bitch. Like, I don't know how Sorsha thinks she can marry her off to anybody. She is most obviously same-sex oriented as well. And of course, her same-sex compatriot is her sparring partner who allows her to win all the time. So there's another instance where now Sorsha's daughter doesn't have the skills to protect herself, let alone anybody else, because her little girlfriend was letting her win all the time. And it's just, it's this pattern through this series so far. Willow isn't using his powers because apparently he's a one and done now. If he uses up his powers, he doesn't have any more magic left. Why the hell that's a problem? I don't know. This isn't something that was addressed in the original film. So what the hell is this shit? Ugh, there are so many things wrong with this. And they're adding extra drama just for drama's sake. Like this prince that Sorsha's daughter is supposed to marry. Apparently, he was possessed or something when he was young and he killed his brother. I mean, it just, oh my god, why? Why, why, why? Enough with the bizarro, tragic backstories, along with the, just the, the, I don't know, I mean, just this, this over-emotional schlock. I'm just, I'm so fed up with this crap. Can't you just tell a decent story without these broken, absurd characters who nobody would want to be around or be friends with because they are just... Oh, pardon my French, but these people are just fucked in the head. Is this what these writers in Hollywood, is this their lived experience? Because that's the only thing I can think of as to why they would write such crap all the time. And I know I've gone on a bit of a rant there. <laughs> I just, uh, as I said, I watched that film over and over and over again. I mean, I lived in a very, very rural area. We got our first VCR in 1987. We didn't have cable where I lived. We didn't have satellite dishes or anything like that. So, I mean, broadcast TV was it. And boy, once you got that VCR, oh my God, it was just, it changed everything. And one of the few tapes I had was Willow. To see it being used like this, it just, oh, it's just disgusting. The only episode that was any good was episode number two, though that still had problems. And the only reason that was any good was because that episode was written by the original screenwriter who wrote the screenplay for the original film. You can tell episode two was better than one, three, and four. However, it still had problems because of a lot of the woke nonsense that's being incorporated into the series in general. So just there you go. I'll let you talk now, old man. <laughs> I wanted to let you do your thing. I had to get that rant out. Because for me, I have an, an opposite experience of you. I've, I've seen the film. I watched it once when it first came out. And then we watched it together before we watched the series. So I have no tie to the series. From somebody who has no tie to it, just as a separate property, this is a bad series. Yeah. Even if it wasn't a Willow series. And the only credit I'm going to give them, because I remember I said this to you on episode one, the only good thing from episode one was I think that those they were shooting inside the castle on practical sets. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't this green screen garbage. If it was green screen, it was really well done, but I'm pretty sure it was practical sets. The landscape that they had... Although I don't think it matched the film, because the film, a lot of the land was kind of brown. Or snow. Or, yeah. But it was very barren. And I, it, uh, once you got outside of Willow's Village, it was a very desolate landscape. Whereas this was very green. So, again, I'm not tying... I have no ties to the original movie. But I did like the fact that there were colors in this, just as a film property. And that they shot on practical sets in the castle. Yeah, and maybe... Now that they've gotten out of Willow's purview, maybe now, because we saw that one demolished village, was it the slaughtered lamb or whatever it was that the uh, one guy was trying to get to for, uh, I won't spoil it in case anybody's actually enjoying it. But anyways, once we got there, now it's getting to be that desolate landscape like they had in the original film. But up until now, it, it really wasn't a good match. And, you know, you mentioned the 
what, what I guess the, the term for this is woke, where you have these overpowered females that have bad personalities. Yes. And then in addition to that, because I don't think by itself that's necessarily woke, but then the son or brother who got captured was a moron. That's how he's been portrayed so far. Yes, yeah. up until this point. Maybe it's going to shift. But they have to know what the culture's like right now, what a turn off this is. If they decide down the road they're going to give this guy a little bit of value, who's going to be around to watch it? Because the two female leads, the uh, redheaded woman who wants to be a knight, and then the daughter... Sorcia's daughter. Yeah. The princess. The redheaded knight is not as annoying, but the daughter, every time she's on the screen... It's like Michael Burnham level horribleness. She is a jealous, nasty piece of work. She hates Elora Dannon so much. All I can come up with is that she's just jealous and it just comes across like she is just a horrible person. Oh my God. Like, why would you write her this way? If you're trying to actually make this pro woman series, which I don't think they are, but that's what a lot of people say, then why would you write them to be such nasty, horrible people? Every time they're on the screen, the only time I have any interest at all, because at the very end of episode one is when they finally met up with Willow. And then episode two is when they were getting Willow ready to go out on the journey. Willow at that point, early on, was the only interesting character in the whole frickin' series for two episodes. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed him in that second episode. However, right after that, he turned into... I realized in the movie he was a bit of a buffoon because he wanted to be a, a magician, a wizard, but he wasn't quite there yet. But... Oh my gosh, the way they're portraying this guy now. And yeah, it's weird. It's like he spends his magic and then he has to roll over and go to sleep. <laughs> so he's like a two-pump chump. Has to roll over, done. Oh, God. And so like after episode two, Willow's nearly useless for anything. I have no tie to this movie franchise or the one film franchise. I will continue to watch this simply because I know you want to continue to watch it to see how bad it gets. I must document it. But... I have no interest in this. I don't know how they're going to fix this. This last episode, I was staring out the window. I mean, I was approaching Star Trek Discovery level disinterest in this thing. I didn't have as much passion against it because, again, I don't have a tie of what they're peeing all over. Mm -hmm. But it was bad. I think there's like eight episodes in this series. Uh, se could season. be. And I don't understand. I do not understand. Like you asked, why would you buy the rights to a franchise or decide you're going to make a continuation of the franchise and then do this to it? Like, why would you do that? Well, especially since it seems like they didn't understand the original film. Like at the end of the original film, Elora Dannon was just a baby. I mean, she didn't have to be anything special other than having the mark on her arm that essentially caused Bav Morta to lose her shit and she lost control of the situation and she defeated herself. In the meantime, Mad Mardigan and Willow, they found something within themselves that they either didn't know was there or needed the confidence to believe in. You know, Mad Mardigan, he was kind of a, um, he was a Han Solo character. And considering that the original creator of Willow was George Lucas, I can't say that's surprising. Well, it's interesting, too, because you, you brought up Jonathan Kasdan. Yeah. And we looked this up, and it looks like his dad, Lawrence Kasdan, was a co-writer for The Empire Strikes Back. Sure was. So it's just interesting noting that little tie there. Yeah. And his father, obviously, was a much better writer than him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and at the end of the original film, Willow... He defeats Bav Morda using the skills of trickery and deception as a magician that he already possessed. He didn't even use magic. He used his own smarts to defeat her. Well, that goes back to that lesson of the finger test and which finger points and... Which he finger has the... The power to change the world or whatever it was. I don't remember word for word now. But yeah. and The, the correct answer is the one pointing back at yourself. It's your own finger. Mm -hmm. It's your own finger. And yeah. And Willow understands that by the end of the film. I mean, this was really a film about Mad Mardigan and Willow. And the rest, Alora Dannon was just 
the device that was used to get them there. She could have been a magic baton for all we care that they never actually activated. The important thing was that Bav Morta was threatened by her and was going to all these great lengths to try to defeat her. She brought her own destruction upon herself in the end when Willow tricked her. This series, I don't know what kind of message we're going to get from this, but so far... I don't have much hope that it's going to be anything like the original film. They almost ruined Willow. He's he's not 100% ruined, but he's like 97%. So unless Dove decides that she's going to somehow gain some abilities on her own, it's probably not going to be coming from Willow. There's four episodes left, maybe. Again, I don't know for sure it's eight, but normally in this day and age... It could have been eight, ten, I'm not sure. Eight to ten is usually yeah. common. But... I don't know what they're going to do. They they pretty much ruined Willow. That last episode, he was kind of incompetent and grumpy, and mm-hmm. he's become unlikable. So who is there yet to like? Then they got that thief guy that's along with them, and I don't even understand his purpose. I don't even remember his name, which tells you yeah. how much I care about him. I don't remember his name either. Allegedly, he was Mad Mardigan's squire. I guess. And for some reason, Sorsha was keeping him locked up in the dungeon back at her castle. But then she lets him out to protect her daughter. And it's just like, oh, okay. Oh, and to go retrieve her son, I guess, because she doesn't really seem to... She doesn't seem all that concerned about her son. She seems more concerned about the fact that this crone has Bav Morda's blood, which runs in her veins and her daughter's veins and her son's veins. And I guess they kidnapped the weakest link there. So yeah, make the, of that what you will. The stupid son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just, why? Why, why, why? Well, I know why. Because this is their answer, apparently, to all that Lord of the Rings nonsense. Because um, I didn't even bother trying to watch that because I heard well, it probably is their that it was answer horrible. It it's probably is their answer to that horribleness, yeah. the Rings of Power. I've heard nothing but horrible. Th- we haven't watched it. Nope. We're not going to watch it. No. But this looks like this was their attempt at doing the same thing. And I don't know. I mean, it's it's... This is, from what I've heard from people, this is probably better than Rings of Power, but that's comparing really low-hanging fruit to each other. Yeah. Because I don't think this is a good series at all. Well, and let's not forget, Rings of Power was their answer to that Game of Thrones series, whatever Mm. the hell it's called, I don't remember. House of Dragon, I think. House Mm. of Dragons. Something like that. Which is another thing I'm not going to be watching. It's like, this is Battle of the LARP societies. I mean, really. None of this is cutting-edge television. No. Even that that new uh, Game of Thrones stuff, there's nothing there that looks cutting-edge. I mean, I didn't care for Game of Thrones, so I realize I'm on the outsides here. But at least Game of Thrones, I can give some credit for... The high quality costuming and sets that they applied to the series. Yeah. Whereas I don't know what they're doing now. They're stuck in this. Yeah, you called it like LARPing. Mm-hmm. They keep making these these same type of medieval era type series, and it's like to what end? What story are you trying to tell? Well, especially with the way the dialogue goes, the way that the characters speak to and interact with each other. This again bears very little resemblance to the original film and seems more like some sort of fan fiction LARPing crap. Yeah, it's it's not good. No. And I'm I don't know what comes after this. I don't see this season of Willow going past this season. I don't oh, I see- can't imagine. I can't imagine. It, we're like midway in, in season one, and it's gone off the rails. It's garbage. I don't know how they fix that. You can't. And I don't know why this would get continued to season two. It reminds me of She-Hulk. Yes. Where we knew going into She-Hulk watching it, up until that last episode, it was just boring and not going anywhere and whatever, whatever, whatever. And that last episode, you could tell this wasn't going anywhere after that. Yep. This thing didn't even get that far. This <laughs> thing is such a... It's not even worth any controversy. At least She-Hulk, you had moments where you could, you know, when they introduced Daredevil and then did things to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I could see where during the, se- the season as it went on, there was like these little controversial moments that would get them some press time. Well, of, especially that final episode. Right. Yeah. But Willow, it's not even worth talking about other than saying it's bad. It's it's bad in a boring way. Yeah, I mean, it's worth talking about for those of us who were fans of the original film. 
also to ask the question, you know, where does this crap end? Like, when are they finally going to stop doing this? When is it finally going to be enough? Well, I think we're getting close here. I think, from what I understand, that, that Lord of the Rings prequel, The Rings of Power... That cost a crap ton of money to get the rights for. And it failed. And it failed, and they're going to try a season two, like, in a couple of years. Yeah, she good luck Hulk, with that. Yeah, She-Hulk failed. No more for that. I think this is going to fail. I think we're at the, the tail end of this stuff where they finally, not maybe the people making this, but the people above them who who The money the books, people, yeah. They're good. They realize this stuff doesn't make money. It's the People aren't getting into this, and we've got to do something else. So... I'm hoping this is like the tail end. Maybe we get like one or two more bad series and then things are going to turn around because I don't know how much lower you can get. Well, I think because it's a machine and I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that it hasn't puked up at us yet. We probably have five years before this crap is completely over. But what we're witnessing now is the beginning of the end. Yeah, I think so. So I think that's the good news. I think All this stuff. I think going back to the franchise, that is personal to me. I think those CBS secret hideout Star Treks are putting a noose around their own necks. I think that this next season of Picard with all the next generation characters is going to completely crash the franchise. Yes. And I think that's going to be the end of secret hideout, bad robot, whatever you want to pretend that who's not in charge. I think that's going to be the end of CBS Star Trek because they drove it in the ground. The only thing I've heard any remote positivity about are the animated stuff, Prodigy and Lower Decks. I don't like Lower Decks. And Prodigy, I watched a few episodes. I hated Prodigy. I mean, it wasn't for me. It was for a kid. But if the highlight there are these animated series, you're in big trouble. (laughs) So I think we are at the end of this. I think Star Trek crashes after Picard's next season. And I think that stuff like Willow and the Lord of the Rings prequel and She-Hulk, I think this is getting ready to cause the whole system to crash upon itself. And I think that's largely because people are rejecting this stuff very vocally. And the best way to speak about that is to not pay for this crap. So, yeah, you know what? Don't give these assholes money for the shit. Um, The desecration of basically 80s and 90s culture. Well, even early 2000s, because Lord of the Rings, that was that was an early 2000s series. Well, the movie, but then you go back to the... Uh... I'm just talking movies now, because, I mean, a lot of movies are based on much older literature. Yeah, because, I mean, another thing we haven't talked about is Interview with the Vampire. I mean, that's not oh. a place to talk about this now, but, I mean, there's another thing that was... It was a, a book series that started in the 70s. They made it into a film in the mid-90s. We watched one episode of the new series. Oh, I didn't even get through the first episode. episode. And there's another thing that I was really into, because I'm a reader, and I read the first three books of the Vampire Chronicles from Anne Rice. Like, I was some sort of fundamentalist Christian, and that was my Bible. Not meaning to offend anybody, but that's just how I was. And (sighs) to see what they're doing to this stuff, it just, it makes me so angry. Like, if you want to write this crap, go ahead and write this crap. But you know what? Write it as your own crap. Stop pissing on other people's work. Stop. I am so fed up with this having to put your own mark on a franchise bullshit. You just lift your leg and piss all over it, don't you? Enough is enough already. That's not yours to do that with, you piece of shit. I'm just done. I'm done. I've reached a point where there's not much new TV I watch. We watched, well, not much new TV we watched for pleasure. Yeah. We watched a lot of crap like the CBS Star Trek for pain. I think Lois and Clark is one of the few things we did watch The Expanse and The Orville Mm -hmm. for pleasure. Yep. So only one of those is active, and that's just one last season for uh, Superman and Lois, not Lois and Clark. Yeah. That's a whole different series. You're dating yourself. Uh, I'm dating myself. That one wasn't as good, but that that, that's a whole separate (laughs) thing. But... We don't watch much for pleasure anymore because what's out there is garbage. Uh, the closest we had high hopes, or you had high hopes for Wednesday. I did. I think you enjoyed it much more than I did, according to our review. Well, as I said, once I put it in the context of this is Monster High for late teens, um, maybe even mid-teens, then I could enjoy it. Wednesday but- was much, much better 
than Willow. Oh, I'll, God, yes. I, I will completely concede that because at least there were four episodes of Wednesday that I actually enjoyed. I've enjoyed nothing. If I got to go to sets, hey, I like that they were shooting on practical sets and the grass <laughs> looked green. That's the only highlight I'm giving this series. At least with Wednesday, I was able to pick things, lots of things that I liked in the first four episodes. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I was saying I liked the green grass. Oh, but then again, you know, in this day and age when everything's practically shot in black and white. Um, well, that's why I gave it credit because <laughs> they do that color grading nowadays, or have actually they have for quite some time, where they make everything all gray or teal and orange, and it just looks so unnatural. Mm -hmm. But the, for Willow, it actually looks, the cinematography looks watchable. And it's a shame because like, I, it doesn't make my eyes bleed. But then I listen to the story, and then I have to My stop. My ears are bleeding, yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Willow, another really horrible piece of shit. So, there you go. Anybody else been watching Willow? I know that a threshold for pain has to be pretty high to watch crap like that. So, if you have, definitely tell us about it in the comments. Were you as outraged as we were? So, anyway, thanks for listening. Take care.